Welcome to another video on the Railgun build. In this episode we are going to take a look at the design approach and realize some problems and solutions to these problems. In order to have a, an effective design we must first realize what is going to happen and what can go wrong and before we start the actual design we have to first make a sort of prototype. Before we are going to build anything or design anything, we are going to look at uh, what a rail gun requires. First of all, what it needs is a rail. For, of course, without rail, you don't have a rail gun because you will also need a projectile. But to accelerate the projectile, you will need a power source. But that power source also has to be charged. For that we have a power supply unit. This also requires a power source. For example, a battery. While this is just the basics for a railgun, we want more than just the basics. We need to realize the problems for parts 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. All these parts will have their separate videos and I'll probably add some more boxes to it in upcoming videos. But for now we are going to focus on the problems for number 1 which is the rails. The rails com actually comes with more problems than you would expect but as you saw in the last video a railgun works with high magnetic field densities. This causes a problem because when that happens you will have two magnetic fields with the same polarity which will cause into the rails repelling each other with actually great amount of force which are pretty troublesome because if your rail starts to bend this is an exaggerated drawing what this means is if your projectile passes along it will, lo it will lose its connectivity to the rails and it will kill your railgun's effectivity. Another problem with the rails is the most common problem which is welding. If you pass a high current through the rails and the projectile passes along, the projectile will actually start to weld against the rails because the Rails have to be very conductive. We do not, we cannot use a material that's hard to weld. So we need to find a solution how to minimize the damage caused by welding. So now we are going to look at some solutions for these problems. Problem number one was bending. In order to resist bending, we have to create a very strong structure on, on the, to support the rails and that structure has to uh, its strength has to come from the material itself therefore we can't just rely on using a support against another fixed support but we have to use the materials we are going to use as as dampening for the forces in later videos we will take a look at how much these forces are and how we are going to make the structure. The second problem is welding. This is one of the greatest problems with rail guns. That's why the reason why most people use coil guns. But even though it's a pretty hard problem to solve, we are going to try anyway. The first was we are going to make 
the rails interchangeable. What this means is we can either get rid of the rails completely and just fix new ones in it. And the other one is just we take it out, we clean up the welding spots and we put it back in. But for that, we have to make sure the rails are adjustable so we get maximum connection between the projectile and rails. Solution number two is using a plasma. What this means is if you have a rail and you have a projectile, you don't have a direct connection between the rail and the projectile, but in between we have a plasma that will function as the main conductor between the rails and the projectile. Therefore, the, the, the rails will not be affected by the high currents and the projectile, so it will cause welding. But instead we'll use a coating and we'll coat the projectile or the rails with a certain metal that will become a plasma at high currents. As you saw, most of these solutions are mechanical engineering or materials engineering related, which is my field of study. So it shouldn't really be a huge problem, but I don't think it won't be easy either. Also for the projectile, we have a couple of problems. The first problem will be what will the what is the material the projector will be made of because for an effective projectile we need a projectile that's able to pierce preferably through steel and it should be light and not as heavy to accelerate problem number 2 is the conduction in order to have an effective rail gun you will have you want the projectile to be as conductive as the rail, but that's almost impossible to do. We can at least fix ourselves on getting the projectile as highly conductive as possible. In order to do that, we have to make a direct link between the conduction and the material. The material has to be strong and highly conductive. Problem number three is aerodynamics. In my first vlog I showed you a little preview on what I was working with in order to make the most out of the aerodynamics for the projectile. This will require more math than actually design. So now we know a little bit about the problems that comes with the projectile. We can focus ourselves on the solutions of these problems. Problem number one is the material and is directly linked the conduction of that material. Well, I was thinking about having a projectile which is made from steel, which is a pretty heavy projectile, but it's strong and it's and it's probably able to penetrate through a steel plate, but it's not as conductive as the, the rails itself. So we will have a steel projectile and around it we will have a conductive material therefore we will have the strength of a steel projectile but its connectivity of something like copper or something problem number three is aerodynamics its solution I would use was the the algorithm used for rocketry which is a cone shaped object which is aerodynamic up till something like Mach 7 or something. Now we are going to look at the third part of the whole railgun, which is the power source for the rail and the projectile. The problem we are facing is we need a power source that is that can deliver high amounts of power. Therefore we need a high voltage and a high current. 
The solution to this problem is pretty simple. In order to get the high voltage and the high current, we are going to use a capacitor. A capacitor is a device that's able to hold an amount of charge in the form of electric energy. This is an example of a capacitor. But the ones we are going to use are these capacitors. They are a little bit bigger in size, but it should do the job as, as long as we switch them in parallel. The next part we are going to look at is the power supply unit. This, un this power supply has to deliver a high amount of power to charge these capacitors in a fast rate. We want a fast rate because we want to fire our railgun as fast as possible. Preferably as fast as we can reload it. Therefore we have a couple of problems that we are going to run into. One is the high power. Well with high power there, there will be a lot of problems. For example we will have heat and other problems with which will uh, be more explainable in the future videos. The next problem we are going to see is the size of the power supply. We can't fit a huge power supply in our railgun to power the, to power the capacitor bank because that would simply not fit. So it's going to be a challenge to get the high power and the size. The solution to high power problem is going to be in the topology of the power supply we are going to use. And the topology I am going to use is the full bridge converter. This is going to introduce a new problem we are going to take a look at now. The third problem will now be efficiency. In order to get high power and shrink it down, we will get a pretty low efficiency. Using this a topology, we, are, we will introduce more components which will be the result of the less efficient converter of our power supply unit. The solution to point number two, size, will be using a high frequency. If we use a high frequency, we will be able to shrink down the transformer and possibly fit it in a single PCB. As I said, efficiency will be a huge problem in our power supply because less efficiency will generate more heat and more heat will kill the effectivity of a power supply or it might even explode. So what, how can we increase the efficiency of our converter? Well, first of all, we'll be introducing zero voltage switching. This means that the transistors will be will have almost no switching pro losses. I will explain this further on in probably the next video on our build because now we, we are really going to start the design. Another thing will be introducing phase shifted uh, pulse with modulation this is a big long sentence but we are going to introduce both of these to increase the efficiency of our power supply as a last point of our components we have the power source for the power supply unit well, this will just probably be a lithium battery, that's because they are currently the only ones that will be able to provide the amount of power to our power supply that can charge the capacitor bank. The requirements I am wishing for are 
mobility that means we are we will be able to take our device and use it in a mobile situation just like a regular gun it won't be fixed on some sort of car or robot it will just fit in our hands point two is that it's rigid and it won't collapse under all the forces in internal or external we want it to be powerful I want to reach at least 100 joules of muscle energy you might think that I'm crazy but perhaps I am but it's what I'm trying to receive what we also want is that it's fast so we won't we won't we don't want to wait for it to recharge for one minute we just want to fire reload fire as simple as that but and last but not least we want it to be safe we don't want to be electrocuted in the middle of our operation or anything so that was everything for now in the upcoming videos we are going to start designing our prototype the prototype won't be as as won't be able to fit our requirements but we will just see uh, how everything is working and so on and then probably the first thing I'm going to focus on is the power especially power supply unit because it seems to be a pretty popular topic now in the uh, energy weapons so in the next video I'm going to start working on my power supply unit as you can see I have already bought some transformers and I've got some more components ready to be used and prototyped so I hope I see you next video